We're back here for day two of getting the 69 International truck on the road running. It hasn't moved in, I, I believe it's 15 years. We gotta put a, a new brake master cylinder, we gotta put a new clutch master cylinder, a clutch slave cylinder, neither of them work. So we gotta get them installed. We have to get them bled out and we have to make sure, A, the clutch isn't frozen, the throw out bearing's not messed up. We have a lot of work and this trip is 250 miles over two mountain ranges with an old dump truck. I'm sure it's probably not the smartest thing I've ever done, but it'll probably be one of the funnest. And you guys get to come along and watch. Let's get at it. So, being it's an older truck, when you look up part numbers for them and you look up the different uh, types of parts that are in them, there's multiple parts it could have had. I didn't have the truck near me, so I didn't know whether it was a three bolt mount or a two bolt mount master cylinder. Uh, the same with the slave cylinders. I didn't know how big of a bore they were. So I did what any guy would do that didn't want to drive six hours for nothing. And I ordered one of each. So. We have multiple master cylinders. We have multiple slave cylinders for the clutch. Now it's just gonna be figuring out which one fits. And hopefully there wasn't a, a fourth or fifth one that I didn't know about. We had to order, uh, order all of them. None of them were in stock anywhere. And judged on the packaging, I think they've been around for a while. So, so yeah, so there's a master cylinder for the clutch. And I did see that the brake is a three bolt master cylinder. It looks an awful lot like this one. So I think this is the winner. And I think this one will work too. So we'll be good to go. So last time we were here, I soaked these with penetrating oil just in case we, we had to take them off. Actually, I soaked everything I thought I may have to take off because worst thing is, is getting here with the parts and taking one of these off and it breaking because it's rusted fast. Now, they're very rusted. I don't have any line wrenches or anything like that, which I should have brought, but I forgot. So we're gonna soak these down again. I'm gonna be real careful taking them off and hopefully I can get them on without, without them breaking. Very interesting. So you'd think a 1969 dump truck would have all standard parts on it, but even back in 1969, I think somehow I have a, a 10 millimeter fitting on here. It's either that or it rusted that much that it is now a 10 millimeter. Get some blaster on there. Well, I think it must be a rusted line because the 10 millimeter doesn't fit it either. Hopefully a little bit of heat will help get her loose. It's not a full torch, but it's something. I'll bet you there's a blow torch somewhere around here though. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me get it. I might have to borrow it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh, that'll do it. What was your name again? Hank. Hank. I don't know if I asked you. I'm terrible with names. Everybody forgets it. Much better, George. <laughs> all right, let's see if that loosened her up at all. No, she just, she's just stripping. Who would think that a fitting that's been on for 50 some years would strip and not want to come off? Oh, looks like it's coming loose. See how lucky we can get. Cause it's gonna wanna spin this tube now cause it's corroded and rusted the nut onto the, onto the line here. So we're gonna have to see if, if it'll come loose from the line without twisting the line off. And now I gotta do this without crushing the line as well. Uh, hopefully uh, we have this much luck driving this down steep grades, 
with brakes that I'm probably not going to be able to prime right. Man, that's hot. All right, we got good threads on the fitting, and uh, look at that. She's loose. I'm looking down the firewall, down to where this line runs to where the slave cylinder is, and I'm pretty sure that where it connects, it must have collected water, and it's, uh, it's broke down there. So I'm gonna crawl underneath there and take a look. While I'm under here, I might as well make sure all this stuff here is loosened up with some penetrating oil. Man, this thing has multiple bleeders on each drum. When you're working on something that's been sitting for so long, the number one thing is all this rusted stuff on here. One of the first things I do with every project is get this stuff lubed up. So we actually lucked out. I went down underneath where I thought it was corroded. And it is corroded, but it, it does still seem to be together. So we're gonna keep moving, replace this master cylinder, and just hope that once we get the uh, clutch master cylinder and slave cylinder in, that it doesn't blow a line or something like that, which is probably what it's going to do. But we're gonna try it, see what happens. Sure, absolutely, thank you. All right. It's threaded onto the inside of the pedal here, probably with a 916 bolt or something. So we'll get inside and, and get that off. So it actually had a, a clevis pin holding it in, which I don't know how safe that is. I guess back in 1969 standards, but it makes it nice for it to come in and out. And there she is, factory original, that's for sure. So what do you think, you think it's original? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been in there for a while. Uh, hopefully it's the same thread. Yes. Working on these old trucks is, and cars and stuff is so much better than working on the new stuff. Has a lot more character. So what do you think the chances are driving out of here today and making it 250 miles away? Good luck. Yeah, you don't think? I think it'll, I think it'll go. You think? You don't think the brakes are gonna blow out like the master cylinders won't blow out or the I don't think. overheat or, I'm just worried about going across the mountain. But I think it does have an e-brake there, right? I'm almost wondering while I have it apart, I wonder if I should take this off first so I can reach this other stuff a little bit easier. You know what, before I pull the next bolt out, I should probably also take this line off. Thank you. So I didn't want to heat this up too much because I'm not sure if this is what fittings are in here as far as if there's any o-rings and or uh if they're just a copper washer i would assume it's a copper washer in there but I'd rather be safe than sorry all right let's see if we can get this off without any major issues I remember last time we filled these up so definitely lose a little bit of fluid here Fitting over here, I gotta get to. So if 
look down in here, you see a ton of hydraulic fluid. So that's that's all the fluid that we put in there last uh, last time. So I was trying to figure out where the fluid went. That actually makes me happier than if I couldn't find a leak in this master cylinder because then it's it's going to mean that you know one of the brake cylinders would have been leaking or the line would have been leaking so this is good you know having that leak out of that side of it, it's very good it makes me worry a little bit less so all right well, i'm gonna stick this in first awesome thank you here's another one here if you can do that that's that is pretty bad see it think you can get that yeah i can get that awesome thank you so this master cylinder's got two sides to it. We'll put a plug in the one side and hook the other side to the brake line. It's so awesome doing projects like this, especially when you're you know, you're out on location away from your shop and you don't know how things are gonna go when things do go pretty well. I better find some wood to knock on somewhere. Makes it so much more fun to do. Right. I just wanted to make sure it was seated in there. Right, the washers look to be good. It did end up being a copper washers in there. I didn't think there'd be any O-rings. Seeing how old the truck is. Working on this project, I'm kind of trying to do it fast because I'm so excited to get it to actually move. Knowing that it hasn't moved in so many years, I get more and more excited the closer I get. Let's see if I can not cross thread this. All right, so brake master cylinder is in and hooked up. All right, so let's get this clutch master cylinder in. Leave those loose while I hook up the clevis. Clevis is in. Sometimes things go so smooth that it makes you worry. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're installed. They went in relatively well, I think. Being here, uh, you know, some time ago and just lubing everything up and, you know, putting some blaster on it and letting it soak in and having some heat helped out a lot. So, yeah, so moving on, we'll get the slave cylinder on now for the clutch. Hopefully it goes as smooth and then uh, we'll get everything bled out. And then as long as it starts again, we should be able to move it like under its own power. It'll move like I can drive it at least a couple feet. Slave cylinder. Hey, man, this guy's all right. Let's see if we get as lucky with a slave cylinder. What do you think? I have a positive attitude. There you go, brother. <laughs> so, this will be my saving grace if the brakes don't work. It's how they do a lot of these more heavy duty trucks. It's literally like a double padded drum brake and it stops the drive shaft from spinning but these definitely aren't made to stop you when you're moving it's made to just keep you stopped but i have used them in an emergency you know and they usually do a, a pretty good job so if the brakes do go out when we're on our trip i'm fairly certain that i can at least you know slow down with it some gear down so it uh, makes me feel a little bit better but we're gonna get this we're gonna get this uh slave cylinder out here for the clutch. I was really surprised that 
this truck had a hydraulic clutch in it. I guess I should pull the hydraulic line off again. This is gonna be a bear. So I can see how rusted this one is. I might need that torch again. It's not coming loose, the nut that uh, holds the hydraulic line in, I'm not sure what it's called, but anyway, the nut that holds the line in, it's rounded out because it's so rusted. I'm almost wondering if the slave cylinder is okay, but I did just torch it. I probably should have tried putting some hydraulic fluid in and bleeding it just to see if the slave cylinder was okay, since we know the um, hydraulic unit was probably bad, but I easily could have just torch the o-rings inside of the slave cylinder so making it bad even if it wasn't I'll try to put some fluid in it and just see what happens so i have a feeling it's not going to come off too too easily all right let's go and put some fluid in it try to bleed it out so i'm hoping that slave cylinder down there's good because i don't think the retainer nut's going to come off the hydraulic line without breaking and it's a metal to a rubber hydraulic line. I know I'm not gonna be able to get one around here. I should have brought a quarter inch and three eighth inch hard line kit with, hydraulic line kit. Didn't think about it if I would have, if something happened here, I could have literally just made my own hard line and replaced it with uh, hard with a rubber line later and it would have been fine for the drive. So we're gonna try this. I don't know if it'll work. I do wanna try this before attempting to remove it because it could be the end of the day for us and a failure in driving this thing home and I really want to drive this thing home today. I'm gonna pump it, try make bubbles. It'll take a while to, to bleed everything out. Uh, we just got pedal. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got clutch pedal. So it's it's slowly bleeding. I do have a, about two inches of clutch right now, of clutch release. Uh, it got all cloudy. Yeah, it's getting some of the stuff from the the old fluid. It's a good sign. Yeah. Let's see if we can keep getting this blood. See what it feels like here. Not enough yet. We bled some of the fluid back down into the slave cylinder. It has about two inches of pedal, but it should have probably about four. I'm actually kind of curious. So I want to get it started. Uh, hopefully it starts again, but I want to get it started and you know feel if it is releasing the clutch or not. I just want to see if it, see what it does. So if it does or doesn't release, we'll get down underneath it, try to bleed it better. gas in her. Got any gas in it? Um, it has a little bit in it. I have a gas can there. I'm gonna get some more in there. It'll fire up throwing some in the carb here. It just doesn't prime too well. I'm sure the uh, accelerator pump's probably not the healthiest. Finicky. It's old. <laughs> she goes, she won't stop. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little fresh fuel. We probably shouldn't have ran the fuel in last time, or the old fuel through it. And I probably should have took the fuel out of the tank that was in it and put fresh stuff in, but I think it's the work. All right, we'll leave a little extra in there in case we gotta pour some down the carburetor here and there. Alright, see if it starts. Oh yeah.
working. It did start, it is running. The slave cylinder seems to be working. I can pull it in and out of gear. There's not much pedal, so it's definitely not the healthiest. There's probably some air in there somewhere. But honestly, I don't want to mess with anything if it's working. So my thought is, you know, if we drive it after we get the brakes working, is the air gonna work itself out? I think it will from the vibration of everything and being worked. I think the air is gonna work itself out. So I'm not gonna touch it. We're just gonna go ahead and, and jump on the brakes now. And if we get these brakes working, we're pulling out of here and we're gonna try to drive 250 miles home. What do you think about the brakes? Think the brakes are gonna work? I'd, I'd, I'd ride it around if I was you a little bit. Let's put some hydraulic fluid in the brake system here. So I didn't put any in yet. Let's see what happens. I think that'll be a good way we can drive around and check it out then. These old internationals have any power. Oh, that one does. Yeah. All right, same deal. Let's see if we can pump these brakes up a bit. Got air coming out of there? Yeah. All right, we'll let that sit for a minute. Good, a lot of times when you just pump it a little bit and you let it sit for a second, the air actually has a chance to work its way back up and then you pump it a few more times and then it gets more bubbles up out of the bottom of the system and then runs back up to the top. got some air coming out of there so that's good starting to get a little bit of pedal a tiny bit that's shooting it back up out is that air Hydraulic fluid. <laughs> There's water, we got problems. That sucked a ton down. All right, that's a good sign. All right, so we got a little bit of pedal. I put the cap back on. Oh, we got, we got pedal. It's bleeding down, but we do have pedal. All right, I'm gonna get it fired up. You know what that is? That there, I'm almost positive, is a head gasket. And it looks like it's more coming out of the right side of the cylinders than the left. in there but I realized it has a vacuum assist hydraulic booster pump that runs to the intake manifold and I just put fresh fluid in there when it was empty for the longest time so I'm wondering if there's not a seal blown out in that booster that was letting the hydraulic fluid come back into the engine and then into the intake and that's where all the smoke's coming from it's not the head gasket. I thought for sure it was a head gasket for a minute, but it's not. Still air in it. All right, well, um, 
So I'm gonna get my tools, uh, my tools out from underneath here and shut the hood and see if we can make it move. The brakes get on the floor after a while. So there's definitely a ton of air in it, but I'm gonna to try to make it move. We're still gonna to have to, you know, bleed the brakes and stuff. See if we can't get this thing going. We don't have any brakes. The clutch kind of works and it it does move. So that's that's a plus. So the next thing we're going to have to do is try to figure out if there's air in the lines or if you know something in the hydraulic uh, brake system was clogged or, or something like that. I would assume there's air in the lines. You know, coming into this project today, I thought for sure there would be some brake issues. I mean, when they sit, that's normally what you have. But we're going to try to figure it out so we can drive this thing home. Plenty of fluid in there. The fluid's good. Plenty of fluid here. We're good there. Can't believe that, that slave cylinder worked. All right, so we'll get underneath here and start uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with it. So our brake booster wasn't holding pressure and I think it was leaking internally. And that's what was causing all the smoke to come out because it was coming in the manifold. Luckily, we have this other international dump truck that we bought uh, in a package with the other one. So we're gonna pull this one off of here. It is older and it is used, but I can tell it was replaced at one point. So. Fingers crossed we can get this off, not break any of the fittings that we don't have and get it put on the silver one. And then we can, we can try to make it home. But so all we need is brakes. We had a little bit of brakes. It was killing me because I just wanted to try to go, but I don't really feel like wrecking a dump truck. So yeah, so we're gonna get this off. We're gonna stick it on the other one. See if we can't get home. Got a little uh, anti seize in there, so this I'm feeling pretty good about this uh, booster here. Somebody must have installed this with within the last, I'd say, ten years. some other tools to get back in and get those lines off. We'll see if we can get the truck moving. Well, can't get the other truck to stop. So we got the brake booster assembly off of the other truck. We got some of the hoses because it was hooked up a little differently. I don't have all the tools that I really need to do the job. We're gonna put this one on. It's from the other truck. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm, I'm hoping it does work, so. 
This one's much harder to get at. So we're just going to figure out how to get this line here off because it's corroded in there. I don't have a hacksaw or a cutoff wheel or something. This is about the biggest thing I have. <clears throat> Nothing like a little rust for lunch. <sighs> so we're either going to need a bigger wrench try to get this off or we're going to need a hacksaw to cut through here and then just use some rubber hose uh, to connect the two. I'm thinking hacksaw. But I did not bring my pipe cutter so I do have a hack. Alright, I'm going to get this thing off. It's not going to be pretty but I'm going to get it off. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna drill a ton of holes until there's no pipe left. And then I'm gonna stick a hose over top of it. That went easier than I thought. All right, pipe disconnected. Not sure how I'm going to reuse it, but it's disconnected. All right, let's get the last bolt out of there. Knew that wouldn't happen. Uh, All right, it's the old booster out. It does have a, a ticket on it for being remanufactured with a part number on it. So at one point this was replaced before and went bad. So I don't know what the chances are that this one is bad as well, but it, it looks a little bit newer. So I'm just hoping uh, all this works not in vain. We get this thing on, get it all bled out and we get on the road because I have a long drive. I have a feeling we're gonna have a couple of problems on the way home. So yeah, so let's get this thing in. I got rust down my shirt. I got it down my pants. I don't know how it got there. I didn't even stand up yet. Let's get some fluid in here. We'll bleed the booster, brake booster, and see if that fixes our brake. See if that thing's any good. So I'm gonna need your help. If you could to hop in there and push on the brake a little bit so we can bleed them. All right, I'm gonna get down underneath and, and start uh, working, working the bleeders. Hold it down. Pump it. Hold it down. Pump it. Are we looking in there? Not full. Not full. All right, that's a good sign. That means we got something down in there. We're gonna fire it up and get some vacuum going in the booster and see if that helps get some pressure. And we're, we're gonna just keep leading but get the air out.
shutter off. It's so weird. And it's also still like kicking out of the reservoir. Look, it was just kicking out of the reservoir. So the brakes just, they're just not acting right. We changed to the other, uh, the other booster. It was a used booster, but it's on the exact same thing, which I thought was odd. So the only thing I know to do is I want to change this master cylinder out to uh, one of the other ones we have. I don't know what the chances are of it having like a check valve in it or something like that that's letting the pressure bleed back. So luckily we have a totally different one. And hopefully I don't start a fire on my hot header here. Remind me later that I didn't empty this out when there's mysterious fluids running out of my toolbox into the seat of the car. Yeah, that brake fluid's like nasty. I can tell you, we were gonna be pro international truck, master cylinder and brake booster techs. So if any of you need any tips or tricks of what not to do to one of these trucks. Just watch the video, the whole thing. Glad I brought a gallon of brake fluid. Maybe I'll let it breathe while we bleed it. <clears throat> Give it a one inch. There you go. Just keep doing the one inches. All right, now go all the way down. Nice. All right, hold up. I don't know why this thing's leaking out the front. And I don't have any tape or anything to put on it. So I don't have any Teflon tape the threads so I'm gonna take a grocery bag wrap the threads in it hopefully that does the trick Go ahead and hit the brakes on there again. Go ahead. All right, let's try it again. Is it getting pedal? Weirdly less than what it just was. Yeah. Right, let me see how much fluid we got in her. Oh, it's empty. All right, go ahead and pump her slow. One inch or it's just, go ahead. A little further. All the way. Out.
All right, go ahead, see what she does. That's the same as it was. grocery bag for pipe thread tape doubling up on multiple copper washers which were probably so old they're probably hard as a rock so they weren't sealing and uh, well it still goes to the floor but the second one works so I guess the question is do we try to go up and down mountains with brakes that really don't work right what do you guys think would you do it now before you watch the end of the video to figure out what we are gonna do post a comment or something. Well, just watch the other video and then you can tell me whether I'm an idiot or not. It might work itself out of there. on two pumps and the clutch works if you pump it five or six times We got brakes. If I double pump it every time before I need them, the brakes work. The clutch works if I triple pump it every time before I need to use the clutch. So before I stop or slow down, I have to double and triple pump the brakes and the clutch or it won't stop. And the e-brake's not real tight. So I think at the least, if we're gonna try to drive this thing, I think we should tighten the e-brake yet, and then give it a try. It might be slow, I mean, it's bouncing on the road. I mean, these tires have the biggest flat spots that you could ever imagine, so it's kind of like driving on square wheels. Yeah, so I'll crawl under it, I'll get this e-brake tightened up. We'll pack everything up and get on the way. We'll get this parking brake tightened up just in case I have to use it in an emergency. It's not gonna wanna stop this truck too well, but at least it'll be something if I need it. Ooh, hot muffler. Job's not done until you burn yourself at least once. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't need that skin. Oh, we hot. Oh, they're hot. So this was the battery hold down it had, which I don't like because it's metal. Obviously it'll be grounded out if this bounces over and hits the positive, it's gonna make some sparks. But we just got back from doing our CJ5 rescue and I think we bought an extra battery hold down. So I wanna get that in first. I'm gonna make sure this battery doesn't bounce too far.
may not be my best work but it'll keep the battery in so If I got to modify it on the way home, I do. We'll find out. So we're finally done getting the International ready to get on the road. The clutch is still questionable. The brakes are still questionable. But I think with some luck, maybe a little gas too, because the fuel tank's empty. We'll get home. 250 miles. It's been a long day. I'm very excited to get on the road and I'm really hoping that it goes smoothly. So let's go. So now we're on the turnpike and I think this thing tops out at about maybe 60. So it's gonna be a long trip, but it's, it's so much fun to drive. So I got passed by a tractor trailer and it sucked me over towards him and I counter steered and ever since then it's been all over the road. I think we're maybe 75 miles into the trip back to the shop and I'm to the point where it's hard for me to keep it straight down the road. So we found a rest stop, you know, I'm going to open the hood here, but right now it's just, it's beyond safe to drive. So let's take a look, see if we can figure it out. see anything loose or anything that's concerning other than some some hot retreads that are starting to separate I mean, just from being old this rear hub is really hot very interesting that left tire is hotter than all the rest of them she's dripping a little bit of antifreeze Probably just out the cap. No overflow bottle or anything on it. It just overflows and there's nothing left. And that tire definitely wanted uh, wanted a chance to cool down. It's really hot. It's got good air pressure. I decided I'd crawl back underneath here and just take a look around. There's a couple things I saw. One, this muffler is firing right back at the rear. There's no turn down on it, but it is, heck, four feet away from it. So that doesn't make 100% sense to me. So right there's the check and fill area there. So I'm gonna pull that plug out and see if there's any fluid in there. If there's not much in there, I'm just gonna start dumping whatever I have in there and maybe we'll try to make it a little bit further. Stay tuned. She got fluid in her. Yep, yeah, she got plenty in there. Yeah, it's good, nice, thick. Um, more recent, even gear lube. I'm really leaning towards the idea that the exhaust is firing back at the housing 
and it's heating the housing up. I mean, that has to be the case because otherwise this fluid would, would just be so hot. I guess it is hot. It's just cooling when it's, it's hot. It's cooling when it's coming out. Yeah, it's hot. Well, the only other thing I could think to do would be to let a little of the air out of that left rear tire. All right, so. Barely any air on the inside one. I don't know how much air this will actually put in here but I can try to put some air in that inside tire. Still don't know why that rear would be so damn hot, unless it is the exhaust. So we checked the rear fluid. The rear fluid was really hot, but it looked brand new. We did notice the exhaust, although it's four feet away, is firing straight back on the rear end. Our thought is the muffler's heating the rear up, heating the fluid up. The left rear tire is hot because we found that the inside left rear tire was completely flat. Totally missed that. Remind myself, I gotta check air in the tires. I mean, it would be the smart thing to do, right? So I gotta remember to check the air in the tires. I got so excited about leaving. Everything's cooled down. We've been at a rest stop for about an hour. We had a little tiny air pump that got it up to 60 PSI and that took probably half an hour. So we're gonna hit the road. It might be a slow go, but we're gonna get home, hopefully. I think I'll see you guys at the next rest stop. definitely hot but I have a feeling that's just oil coming out of the valve cover gaskets because the valve cover gaskets are so old looks like we got some oil coming out down here coming out of the valve covers on both sides the uh, master cylinder is still leaking as well so we're gonna check the oil, we're gonna fill her with gas. We only got 30, 40 miles left yet and, uh, and we're back at the shop, so fingers crossed, we make it. Just having a little bit of air in that back tire. This, this tire here, it didn't get nearly as hot. Now, the rear's hot. I think that exhaust is definitely making that rear hot. We'll be able to find out once we get a turn down for that exhaust and get the exhaust directed away from it. These tires are about the same. And that rear is definitely hot, so we'll fuel up. We'll let it rest for about a half hour. 
and then we'll get back on the road. So it looks like we won about 100 miles since we filled up last. I thought it was less, but I was just hammered down. I really wanted to, to get back to the shop and to get somewhere before we have more issues. Last time we topped it off until it spit it back out, so we're gonna top it off again and see how much it takes. I believe last time, I think it was uh, five miles a gallon is what I figured we were getting, so let's see how it did this time. full. Speedometer still doesn't work, but that's okay. And the fuel pressure gauge still doesn't work, but that's okay. He's still charging. Temperature's right. And fuel pressure's good. That's all, that's all I'm worried about. So, and we have lights. So we are all filled up. And next stop, Rebuild Rescue Shop. We finally made it back to the shop, 250 miles in a dump truck that hasn't been driven in, in like 15 years. I, I didn't think we were gonna make it. There was a couple times we were gonna quit, but we didn't for a bunch of reasons. A, I didn't wanna pay a wrecker that big to tow a truck that big back here to the shop. And I really wanted to get it here. I wanted to drive it here. We went over two mountains, Appalachian Mountains, literally with a truck with like no brakes. Okay, so so maybe it wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done in my whole life, but it was a lot of fun. It was exciting actually. It's like three or four in the morning and I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to sleep. I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited. So subscribe, like the videos, make sure you come along. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you next time.